October 8, 9.48 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 6. We start the game and let's go! So, this is our defendant, uh, Vera um, Grisham, I believe. I need to check my court record, just to be sure. Uh, is the game too loud? Oh yeah, I'm gonna lower it. Because when we were on chase, uh, the volume was too low, so I have to raise it. Now I have to lower it. Uh, yeah, hello Alex, that sounds awesome. Alright, so... Uh, yeah, her name is Vera Misham, she's 19. Uh, she's wearing um, a striped pink and purple long shirt. She's a defendant accused of poisoning her father, Drew Misham. Um, our um, lovely assistant, Trucy Wright, the adopted daughter of uh, Phoenix. Uh, her dad was a magician and a good friend of his, and um, like she's like a god, she she's like um, a godfather to her, but he's like a father bigger. This guy is a journalist. He's gonna be a, a witness today because uh, he was there during the interview when he was poisoned. But he couldn't have done it because he was nowhere near the coffee cup. Like there was no way that is the killer. He's only here for um, a witness. Um, this guy is uh, oh, he's kind of an uncle. He's not a biological uncle, but he's work at the same magic shop as Trucy's father. So she calls him uh, Uncle Valen. And uh, this is Emma Sky. Every time she's gonna snack, I'm gonna snack. So, um, for those who have eyes, this is what it looks like. The Snackoos looks awfully close as what I'm holding right now, except that they don't have uh, rice crisps inside of it. But, uh, the Snackoos looks like that. Alright, uh, and this is the victim, Drew Grisham, age 52, painter known for his illustration, and he was posted in his own studios. Alright, um, Apollo, uh, good morning! I forgot what her voice was. <laughs> yeah, she's very shy. She's holding a sketchbook and she's very, very shy. Uh, she's wearing jeans. We couldn't see that because uh, last time we talked to her, it was um, behind uh, the detention room window. So, like. So, you're Vera, right? This is Trucy. I'm Trucy. Trucy, right? That's right, with a W. But not, but not right. W R I T E, right? Not right, right? Not the verb. Um, we're on your side. You can tell us anything, please. Good morning. <gasps> she, she speaks. Oh wow, she speaks. Hmm, not bad, not bad. But I think you do better with a simple smile, you know? Oh, is it okay for another girl to tell to another girl to smile? Or is it offensive? I don't know, I hear the game in the background too, your microphone as well. Really? Let me check the volume. It's probably too loud. But it's always been like this, right? Wait, 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 something's off. Uh, let me check on something. No, this is mute. This is mute. No, it's not coming. It's coming through uh, my television speakers. It's always been like this. Maybe my mic is too loud? I can lower my mic. Because I'm, I'm in the red right now. Yeah. But it, it's, it's always been like this. Anyway. How about now? I need to hear, I need, I need to hear myself. That's weird. That's the first time it does that. I don't, I don't understand. Um, okay. Okay. Is it better like this? 
like... Is your microphone closer to the DV than usual? No, not even. Not even. It's weird. It's, I can still hear it. I thought you were using headphones. Uh, I'm using headphones for uh, PlayStation, but... Right now... Right now, uh, the headphones are clipped, but uh, there's no... Uh, no. That's weird. Can lower the volume of the... Okay. Oop. Is it? Is it a butter? Sorry, you might have to use them here too or something. It's really... Okay. But it first, it's the first time it's happening. Uh, like, I, I, I don't get it at all, but... Can always lower the game. All right. Um. Anyway, you're so pretty. You need to sell yourself, you know. Juicy. Let's let's take it easy for starters. She's writing something up. Thank you for taking my case. She draw a smiley face on her sketchbook. Okay, well, that's a start, I guess. Now she's uh, using her polish bottle. There she goes with the nail polish again. That's great, really. It's so cultured. Now she's uh, flipping a page and writes something else. Do you want to try? Oh, really? Girls. The victim, Drew Mission, was a forger. And a stolen painting was found in his studios. A life of crime, really. And maybe one that led to his death. October 8, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 3. Well, we will now uh, <coughs> begin the uh, trial of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Vera Misham. Is the judge okay? His voice is all raspy and he's looking around all nervous like. Oh, he's got a cold. Um, um, the, the, the repercussion of today's trial would be most likely be felt for a long time and may indeed alter our legal system forever. Today is a test of, your, of the jury system. Oh, I know what happened. The sound of when the game comes through your speakers and when it's coming through the stream is likely off. It's always been in sync. I'm not sure what's up with that. Oh. Okay. And the first step towards a new order in our courts. Daddy's secret mission! The jurist will function like a jury. It is hoped uh, their inclusion will help the court to better reflect the people's will. Why aren't there any jurists in the courtroom? Uh, three closed circuit camera watch this courtroom at all times. The jurist has access to everything that transpires. Jurist! Judge well and judge cool. Now he's doing his Gavin pose. Now see here, Prosecutor Gavin. I, I, I was going to say that. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> oh, my apologies, M Judge. Um, <coughs> Jurist, today I'm um, judge. Today's trial coolly, if you would be so kind. The jurists are unbound by the letter of the law. They don't affect the trial with evidence, but by their feelings. And we're about to find out just what effects they're going to have. At least Gavin isn't saying, give me a guilty verdict. Very well, uh, Professor Gavin, the detail of the case if you would. The victim is the painter, Drew Misham. He was killed in his own studio. His coffee was poisoned. By whom, you ask? By none other than the defendant, Vera Misham. 
There wasn't any poison in the coffee! Octoon, someone has been doing their homework. Indeed, poison was not present in the coffee, but on the mug itself. The mug? Ah, a residue was found in the rim. On the rim, I see. The autopsy report describes the matter of our victim's death. The court accepts this as evidence. Mission, Mission's autopsy report added to the court record. According to this report, the victim's death was caused by atrokinin poisoning. A chemical compound that does not occur naturally. Well, uh, the lethal dosage is a mere 0 0.002 milligrams. A touch of atrokinin in the body is the touch of the reaper's sight. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin. You may present your witness. I have for you today a simple man for a simple case. A man who witnessed the murder in its entirety. That journalist, no doubt. The witness will state his name is occupation. Mm, mm. Ah, right. Well, first starters, my name is Spark Brushel. My job is a uh, mm, uh, lone observer of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, a freelance journalist, right? Ah, um, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to say something here for the record. Yes, Mr. Brushel? I dislike conclusions, specifically the jumping to aspect of conclusions. Preconception make parts, sandbox of endless desert waste, end quote. Gavin doesn't seek a uh, velty gear day, just seeks the truth. I keep saying that, but it's true. He even works with Apollo if Apollo's on the right track. Yeah, it's true. But you're a journalist. You said so yourself yesterday. Uh, well, uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but you must understand, I stand before you today. <laughs> uh, today, a man with a dream. I'm offering you my testimony in exchange for exclusive right to the story. Quote, Scoop turns Mr. Brushel into that Mr. Brushel, end quote. Why can't we just have a normal witness or agree with Apollo? <laughs> We're always gonna be w silly witnesses. This is uh, a stamp in the Phoenix Wright games. Every witness is silly. Have you seen, remember the time when they, they brought a parrot to testify? Come on, Polly, say something. <coughs> Mr. Attorney, do you believe this parrot will say anything? Uh, 36, 24, 36, uh. Okay. My name's Polly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Adele. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's hear your testimony, shall we? <clears throat> A simple case, eh, Gavin? For me, the jury is still out. Don't forget DL6. Don't forget DL6. Don't forget DL6. <laughs> the journalist story. Mm -hmm. I visited the studio around 9 that night to do the interview. The first outsider to enter the atelier. Quote, journalist story made. End quote. His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened next. Quote, stars fall. End quote. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Hmm, that does sound like a simple case. Unless you were the ones who poisoned him. What, 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 what are you saying, Judge? <clears throat> need I remind you the cameras are rolling today? I felt the need to be a bit dramatic. You didn't do it, did you? Me do a thing like that? Uh, come on, that's like, quote, newsmaker making the news, end quote. Or even, quote, contempor contemporary witch hunt, end quote. I know, quote, wild accusation rock courtroom, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> rock, indeed. Prosecutor Gavin sure looks like he's having fun. I'm so happy for him. 
Well, the first time the judge raises a possibility usually is pretty quiet and just agrees on one side of the case. Very well, Mr. Justice, your cross-examination, please. All right. Journalist story. I visited the studio around 9 that night to do the interview. 9 at night? Isn't that a little late for an interview? Ah, if the great printer Drew Misham says, come at 9, believe you or me, I go at 9. The first, and then as it turned out, our last interview with our such a prolific painter. <laughs> right. Can you tell us what it was like when you arrived? The first outsider to enter the atelier. Journalistic history made, end quote. You were the first reporter ever in Drew's studio. Posterity will look back on that night as a turning point in journalistic history. Quote, a basically insignificant step for all mankind. End quote. But a giant step for that Brussel guy. End quote. If no one on the other, if, if no one's on the outside ever had access to the studio, then it would serve to reason that the deed was done by an insider. By which he means Vera did it. So, how did this is epoch making interview go? His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. Would you mind being a little more specific? Oh, wait, oui. uh, let me tell you, I am Jumper Copper. In fact, it all began when I was in third grade. No, wait, wait, fourth grade. That's not what I meant. I believe I know what her forehead is rubbing at. This coffee the victim was served, did anyone other than the defendant touch it? Right, right, that. That was, that's what I was going to say, really. I mean, really? Well, well, now, if you got a question to ask, you best to ask up, straight up ask it. That's what I tell at the new recruits, several times, if necessary. Hmm. Quote, right for a great scholar. That's my motto. End quote. Which isn't to say that if you want... Who touched the coffee? Dono. I was in the back, looking at the studio's equipment when he, she served it. Da da da. And what happened next? Hello, Misty, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. You're in time, just in time for the snack stream right now. Um, Emma Skies hasn't taken the bar yet. We're in with uh, Mr. Brushel. Mr. Brushel over here. And um, yeah, my god, this guy's annoying. I, haven't bet, I, I bet even Gavin is just like, ugh. Well, um, Gavin is being professional. He doesn't, he doesn't, um, like, how, how do we say, um, he doesn't frown about it. It's just like, he's being professional. He's, he's having some sort of neutral sound with it. And, uh, yeah, right now he's uh, brushing his skulls with uh, uh, a toothbrush. Because he has many, many brushes on his uh, front breast pocket. There's uh, some sort of feather to dust uh, the, the desk. There's a comb. For his uh, brushy uh, hairstyle, because the the side it's not a mohawk. It's it's very like um, his haircut is like a, a blackboard eraser. You like it's it's like it's as if somebody put a chalkboard eraser on his head on a bald guy, and uh, he's he's have, he's has a pen on his uh, right here because he's a journalist. And um, yeah, he's uh, he has a three o'clock shadow with pinky cheeks and a pinky nose when he sniff a scoop, and um, he always has a, an overpowerly minty breath. He's being professional, yes, but I wonder what's in his mind. Yeah, uh, you know what happened next? Star falls. End quote. What's this about a star falling? Star falls, huh? Oh, it's like an old telegram! Send money over! Zah, oui, you don't know! That's like a journalism code word! An important personage passes away, a star falls! Get it? But there's no gravity in space, is there? I wouldn't think stars could fall, really! Does this matter? Oh boy, this is good stuff, good stuff! Hmm, how about star breaks? Nah, like sponge. 
I know, I know, star dies. Nah, lax imagination. Wonder what the objection is gonna be. Are you raising an objection or are you perceiving this time? Um, the bracelet didn't activate it, so it's it's gonna be an objection. Uh, we have to fetch. Uh, it's gonna be. We have got. We have to present evidence. But uh, I need to press everything to see if I'm gonna add a statement, and that statement is gonna produce a contradiction. But right now, I have no idea where's the contradiction. Uh, of course. You can go with Drew Die straight to the point. I like it. I think we need to hear about something a little more substantial. Oh, I see. The moment of death, Brussels coffee, and the stars coffee. Uh, let's go with the moment of death. Um, about when Mr. Mission passed away. Oh boy, what a scene that was. He puts his coffee mug down with a crash, right? Hmm, yes, and then? Then the cold fingers of death touches his spine's life. Life's flame sputters and fails. Oh. So cold was that touch, he could do naught but tremble uncontrollably. Actually, life's flame is a little tired. Life's river froze over. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's a go. Now he's writing on his, uh, he's writing on his um, wrist because he doesn't have a piece of paper. But he's taking notes on his uh, wrist, on his arm. <laughs> Lives, lives, river froze over. Yeah, that's a go. Mm, I think he's starting his article already. Could you describe that a little more simply? Well, as you can imagine, I was pretty surprised. Mm. He hit the floor, as they say. He hit the floor. <laughs> Artist seizure is final performance. End quote. Atrokinin paralyzes the central nervous system, yeah. The body arcs back like a bow, the limbs tremble, and then- Oh, that's quite enough of that. <laughs> Some of us want to be able to sleep tonight. Oh, yeah? Well, I want details. Lots, lots of juicy details. <laughs> uh, for that, you can listen to our last year's hit single, Atro Queenin, My Love, by The Governors, available at all major music outlets. The point here is that the victim died of atroquinine poisoning. Well, Mr. Justice, how did you find that testimony? Very important or not important? Not important. You'd think the moment of Mr. Misham's death would be important, but Mr. Brussels' story didn't tell us anything we didn't already know. Very well, please continue with the testimony. Okay, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back and press on something else. Alright, let's talk about Brussels coffee. Oh wait! Brussels coffee has anything to do has nothing to do with that. I should have asked for the stars coffee. Oh well. Next time, next time. But yeah, you agree I need to try all the options. Oh so uh, you drank the coffee that Vera served you too, huh? Of course! When someone serves you coffee, you drink it. And quote. That's what my old boss always used to say. Never did get what he meant by it, though. But you're still alive, which is to say you didn't die. Of course not! No point falling before you're a star, end quote. That's not exactly what I was getting at. What were you getting at, then? You know the poison was on the rim, not in the coffee. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There were two cups on the tray she brought. And one of the cops had Drew's signature painted on the side. Hmm, no chance the guest would take that one by mistake, I guess. Well, Mr. Justice, was that their testimony important? No. So, Brashel drank the coffee too. Doesn't look like this is going to lead too much. Very well, please continue with the testimony. Alright, let's go back. And press again. Let's ask about the star's coffee. You say Mr. Misham had the coffee too. But did you actually see him drink the coffee? Of course! He who sees it wins, but he who says it wins bigger. End quote. 
I live in a man sees dog eat dog and writes about it world. And yet, at least the judge is penalizing you for picking the wrong options. Well, well, we haven't. We are pressing. Like, unless unless the prosecutor says objection, it's irrelevant. We're not penalized, but it, it, it's letting it go because we're inquiring. We're pressing. We're only pressing on some details. Like, the judge is not gonna penalize us just because we're wasting his time. Like, uh, we have the right to uh, investigate. Like, uh, this is part of the cross-examination. Yet? What do you mean, yet? I guess I can't say I saw him drinking, really. He had uh, one so-called sip, if that. Man put lips to mug, drinks, end quote. Hmm. That poison is quite virulent, I hear. My stomach did a so-called somersault. Since I got down that coffee without so much as a second glance at it. Wait, maybe something's there. Some kind of so-called trick. Anyone who wants to venture a guess, for the record, writes on his arm. Does this guy has a pause button? Well, Mr. Justice, did you find that testimony valuable? Yes. And I think I know why. Atroquinin takes time before it uh, takes effect. So, if you got poison, he didn't die instantly by taking one sip. The victim drank his coffee then immediately fell over? Oh yes, yeah. You can go to press with that one. Your Honor, this is a vital piece of information. Please add it to the testimony. Very well. The witness will add this to this testimony. Vital. Right. He had one sip, if that, the next moment he was on the floor. Uh. Where is the information about the poison? I'm, I'm checking the, the frame with the atroquinin on it. Looks like you have to take this back part for the photo inside. Uh, Playbush thing. Why would there be poison in a place like this? There's one oblivious reason where we put poison in the coffee, rubbed it on here. That's not very obvious, okay. No, that doesn't tell me much. Uh, 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 uh. Dead by atrocutin poisoning, estimate time of death 9 to 9.30. No, that checks out. Well, the coffee cup is still full, so... I'm gonna examine the cup. See that there? That's poison! Yeah! Don't lick it, Apollo! Don't worry, I'll be fine. No, you won't! You'll die! Look, I know I meant I won't lick it! <laughs> Who knows what you do when you're... when I'm not watching? The concern is touching. Really. Next thing you know, she'll be telling me not to drink coffee before bedtime. Hello, super blind man. How you doing? This is the beginning of a trial. Um, I haven't taken a snack yet because MS MSKI has not testified yet. It's it's straight to Mr. Brushel. Um. Yeah, I love how she just like no, you won't. You'll die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. All right. Um, I don't think I'm gonna present here. I'm gonna press it because I don't think I have an, uh, an evidence that confirmed that uh, you're not gonna die instantly. So he either took a sip or he didn't and then fell over? Oh yes, indubitably! Just like that! Wham bam! Hmm, so Mr. Mission drank the coffee and fell over immediately. Hmm, I think Brussels telling the truth too. Should I get in to talk about something else? Oh, I see! I still think it's hilarious when you eat a snack before the character does. The cup described the poison as slow acting. Uh, 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 uh. I'm gonna say no need. 
There is no real need to change the testimony. The problem is with the testimony is already pretty obvious. Oh, wait! Uh, uh, the moment was on the floor. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. He sure makes it sound exciting. I guess that's his job. There is only one moment we need to focus on, really. The moment when Drew Misham died? Exactly. There has to be something there. Okay, is this not when you raise an objection? Well, yeah, but, um... His daughter brought coffee, had one sip of that, the next moment it was on the floor. Um... Tiny frame... Finan business card, traces of slow acting. Okay, yes, the mug says slow acting, deadly poison atrium. Alright, 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 that's gotta be it. Alright, I'm gonna present the coffee mug. Yes! Why am I dotting myself? <laughs> well, you know what I have a problem with? A particular property of the poison use, atroquinin. Oh, Prosecutor Gavin was quite clear about the poison. A lethal dosage of 0.002 milligrams paralyzes the central nervous system. If you drank that, even you, Mr. Justice, would be reduced to a quivering pile. Why are you using me as an example? Unfortunately, we weren't told everything. There was a vital omission in Prosecutor Gavin's information. Claim your dot dot dot. An omission? Atroquidin is as virulent as they say, but death doesn't come upon ingestion. Not immediately. That's because atroquidin is slow acting. Slow acting? Wah, 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 wah. According to one forensic scientist, you know what? Just because I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat a sneak on her behalf. You know? Oh, flashback! It's one of those. Virulent poison, but it's absorbed into the body astonishingly she sees slowly. It takes at least 50 minutes from the time of ingestion to adverse effect to show. Alright. We should do the thing that turns the time the entire case like last time. Yeah. If we suppose that the moment Mr. Misham sipped the coffee was when he sealed his fate, then he should still have had time left to enjoy his last cup of joe. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? If what the defense says is correct, why, that contradicts the entire testimony we just heard. Well, Mr. Brasho, anything to say on the record? Slow acting. S-L-O-W-A-C-T. It was virulent, alright? Even then, writes on his arm, it has already begun digging its claws into the journalist. Oh, he's working on his scoop. Sigh. <sighs> Thank you, Miss Day. Objection. Clavier bangs the wall. It's a brochel, yeah? A uh, brochel. Uh, let's take a trip back down memory lane. Huh? Uh, did the victim really die the instant he took a sip? Think it over. This is vital. Oh. You know what I think? I think that was. A not so subliminal suggestion. End quote. I admit, it does cause a problem if he died when you say he died. I would be forced to say how villain to my simple case. And you would be forced to say farewell to your article. Come again? You can't write a story based on conjecture, can you? And as the case drags on, other reporters will pick up the scent. And you'll be forced to kiss your exclusive, exclusive scoop goodbye. Mm. Oh, scoop, scoop. Oh, he's brushing his tongue. Scoop, scoop. <laughs> oh. He's brushing his glasses and then uh, brushing his tongues and then brush his glasses again. Ew! 
<laughs> Look, wait. Just wait a second. Just, just one second. We're waiting. We're waiting. Out with it. That was scratch the crap out of those glasses at EU. Yeah, that is EU. I think I just recall a so-called important detail. A revival recollection. A revival of recollection, end quote. A story survival, end quote. A thorny, utterly confused, end quote. Actually, I didn't notice something when I visited the studio. I'd heard of poison that takes its sweet time, you see. But not what I've been saying for the last few minutes, apparently. I'd like to perceive this guy. I think he's going to be lying to save his story. Well, yeah, I, I think he's gonna lie from now on. I'm gonna tell you if the bracelet is gonna activate. We're gonna find the proper statement and then find where he's lying from. Mr. Brushel, are you saying that you noticed something that explained what happened? You bet I am. The antidote for a poisonous contradiction, end quote, you might say. Or, quote, I still have no idea what you're talking about, end quote, I might say. I figured it out, but only after an in-depth interview. See, thanks to my journalism skills, I know who poisoned that coffee. Rubber, 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 rubber. Order, order, order! As far as I can tell, the witness is standing by his testimony. That Mr. Misham died the instant after he drank. Of course, I'm standing by my testimony. And my dream of explosive rights to this story. Ah, I suppose it was too much to hope for. What was? Of course he wouldn't show the simple case, not him. Him? Phoenix Wright, who else? Exclamation mark. Actun, Herr Brushel, report for us if you would. What is it that you noticed? <laughs> the court is a critical trial of the jurist system. I'm afraid no room for doubt is permissible. You will testify to the court about what you noticed. Witness testimony, what Brochel noticed. Mm, oh, I see. Mm. <clears throat> when I arrived at the studio, Mr. Misham was at, at, his, at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. Mm. I thought nothing of it at the time, of course. Now that I think about it, what if he was writing a suicide note? If he's talking about what I think he is, I don't think we're going to need uh, a perceive. Because... Objection! He wasn't writing that letter! Of course! A suicide note? Yes. He had his look on his face. Man's face inscrutable as a quadratic equation, end quote. Suicide? Oh, poor Mr. Misham. But that means Vera's innocent. Would someone commit suicide in the middle of an interview? Oh! Uh, yeah. Huh. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. What Brush all noticed. When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Misham was at his desk. Hold it! What, is there anyone at the studio other than Mr. Misham? Well, his daughter Vera, of course. Was anyone beside Mr. Misham and Vera present? Not a single one. Not a cat. Not a rat. Not even a mouse. The only person who didn't belong to that studio there was you, wasn't it, Mr. Brushel? Ah, I know what you're doing. I know your game. Mm, attorney uses classic Rams then phenomenon ploy. End quote. If you intend to suggest that this reporter is a suspect, I'm sure you also intend to present evidence supporting that assertion, correct? In the meantime, let's move along, shall we? He seems to be writing a letter, and but he quickly sealed the envelope. So he put the letter away when he saw you. Early reporter gets the worm and quote. That's my secret. 
I'm not sure I'll follow. It's the night of the interview. I arrive 15 minutes ahead of schedule. The handle turns, the door opens, and I barge in. Are you sure that's okay to do? I mean, isn't that unlawful entry? Really? Mr. Misham sir, seems to think so. You should have seen him. He crammed his letter into that yellow envelope as fast as he could. Yellow? I know a secret when I spot one, and that was one. It does seem significant. Well, Mr. Justice? I wonder. It does have the ring of something important. Add to testimony. The defense found this testimony vital, Your Honor. Very well. Please add it to the testimony, then. Hey, why not? My account comes free of charge. It was a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at a crime scene. Uh, no, this is a grammary envelope. Red envelope found in the victim's desk drawer. Pa! The envelope was red. The pink envelope was the one grammar. Uh, the one grammary gave. Uh, the one uh, Phoenix gave us to say do not open until uh, blah 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 blah. And as it just so happens, there was a single letter in the desk drawer at the scene. In the red envelope. Whoa! <laughs> he just took his tongue, twisted twice around his head, and then pulled to squeeze his head in. <laughs> Prosecutor Gavin. Yeah? That's some build you shit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's anime for you. Yes. Was a yellow envelope found at the scene of a crime? Unfortunately, no, but a uh, forehead, it's easy to mistake the color of an envelope. Mm-hmm, I guess, but not this envelope. You see, it was postmarked already, seven years ago. Well, Mr. Brushel? I can explain that. Hmm, Drew, right, he wanted to get that letter in an envelope, pronto. Get it out of sight of my beady eyes, right? <laughs> So I grabbed the nearest envelope and crammed away. And what about the whole red and yellow envelope contradiction, chump? Well, Mr. Justice, have you anything to say to the witness claim? Quote, that night, the victim put the letter he had been writing in a red envelope. Uh, it's impossible. That's impossible. Oh, I like your expression, so full of confidence. It's simple, really. As it just so happened, the defense team investigated the contents of this envelope with um, the assistance of a forensic scientist. What? Note that this letter is addressed to Drew Misham. Ow! Oh! Why would he address a letter to himself? Let alone send a suicide note to himself? Mm. I've been scooped! He just did this tongue thing. Order, order, order! Mr. Brushel, can you explain this to the court? Oh, my, 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 my! How could I have forgotten? <laughs> I suppose this happened to the best of us. Quote, reporter gets old, forgets lots, end quote. <laughs> I'm still waiting for an explanation, Mr. Brushel. Well, that's the thing, you see. After he put his letter in the envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? Yes, yes, a stamp. A so-called poster stamp, end quote. A stamp? Whatever for? Well, to mail his letter, what else? And then, why, yes, I think I saw him put it in this letter box. Yes, it was a yellow envelope and he put it in that box. Well, apparently this yellow letter has nothing to do with the case. Oh, oh, I wish it did. Just think if that were a suicide note. Oh, what a story. Star writes suicide note in front of reporter falls. End quote. Extreme objection. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, that has nothing to do with this case. That said. Yes, your honor. It makes me wonder about the contents of that red envelope. 
Oh yeah, Mr. Drew Misham. I've deposited the $100,000 in the designated. Uh, sign the paper and send it to enclosed envelope. What? $100,000 is quite a good deal of money. So this was from seven years ago, yeah? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, use your quarter steel, Master Jakes. Oh, so, so, am I finished here? Here, I mean? I, I, am I finished here? Huh? I was thinking of, you know, going home to start writing. Everybody's silent. Huh? Dot, dot, dot. Um... I hate to state what should be pretty obvious to anyone, but when you catch the scent of a story, you make that um, rather unique face. That. Ah, oh, come on! Attorney has active imagination, little else, end quote. Mm -mm. Even I noticed something, and my eyes aren't what they used to be. You know, I'm starting to understand what all this perceiving stuff is all about. Judge as active imagination, end quote. <laughs> Please continue with your testimony. Tell us about the scent of a story. Eh, hey, I'm the one asking the question here, usually. <laughs> Are you sure, Judge? You're the poker head of courtroom number three. <laughs> Good memory, Master Jake. The scent of a story. Actually, it took a bit of work to get a thumbs up on the interview. Reporter Leverage Story gets his interview, end quote. The story concerned a certain case from seven years ago. That red envelope probably had something to do with it. Say what you will, but Drew's talent was be without compare. Mm. So you threatened to go to press with this story? That's how you got your interview, blackmail? Well, yes. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 no. I wasn't exactly black. Oh, wait, well, I'm not. Uh... Something wrong, Mr. Brushel? Look, 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 look. This is my story, my, my tidbit. Journalist info is livelihood, end quote. I see. While you have me chatting away in here, what's going on out there? What if some Wally Woodsworth or Sally Scooper gets wind of my story? They could be going to press what I'm going to waste! Mm, the court feels your pain, Mr. Brushel. Mr. Justice, let's pick up the pace. A certain case, seven years ago. Wait, seven years ago? Huh? Yep, the bracelet is activating. Actually, it took a bit of work to get a thumbs up on the interview. The victim, Drew Misham, added an aversion to reporters? Boy, I guess. Not even my considerable charms did much for him. Until I finally got my thumbs up, that is. Maybe you can elaborate on the bid for us? A reporter leverage story gets his interview, end quote. Exactly what sort of story was this? Oh, a little one, like I said. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing in between, end quote. I might have suggested I had a lead on this particular story, but I didn't threaten or control or nothing honest. So a suggestion was enough to get an interview? Mr. Mission must have really wanted to keep it under wraps. The story concerned a certain case from seven years ago. Yes, it's probably gonna make sense if it is what I think it is too. A certain case seven years ago? Tell us, what case? Uh -huh. Let me state one thing, Mr. Attorney, and you can quote me on this. I cannot talk about that case. Why not? 
It's about journalistic pride and staunchness and credibility and connections. Journalists reveal sources only over his dead body, end quote. So what'll it be? Gonna strangle me? Dead men don't tell tales, Mr. Attorney. He sounds pretty determined not to talk. Hmm, our changes are breaking his heart looking very good. Alright. I think I know where this is going. I'm gonna go back and check uh, if I get a scent on, on him. Perceive! The starry concern A certain chase Wait, let me check something From seven years ago Okay, let me check Alright There you go, here again yeah, it's the um, it's it's the it's the quality it's the quality of the, the the sounds. Every ROM on DS sometimes has that, like um, no. I'm gonna check another uh, another statement. I'm gonna finish pressing and then I'm gonna perceive everything. I'm gonna press everything and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna perceive everything. That red envelope probably had something to do with it. On the one hand, we have your story and on the other, this letter. What makes you think the two are related? Oh, ah, er, ah, we're just saying it's possible. Call it reporter's intuition, end quote. Eh, uh, I said a lot of things. You're gonna pick all of them apart, huh? Be my guest. All of them? No. Just the incredibly suspicious ones. I see. Anything else you add about Mr. Mission? Say what you will, but Joe's talent was without compare. Just how amazing was Mr. Mission's talent? Huh? Oh, wee boy, I mean, hey, he's a star, man, a star. Oh, I think I know. Okay, okay. I think I know how to uh, perceive him. He knows about his past. He know uh, he know what Misham did before being an artist. The flow on his brush is like a great and dull eating river across the canvas. Artist paints lights up, studio like sun. At quote. This guy is full of wacky gestures. But that one just now was wackier than usual. Oh! He looks kind of nervous to me, Apollo. Definitely. I'm sensing something different than before here. Maybe it's time to bring you out you know what. That testimony left a bad taste in my mouth. It all makes sense. Nothing jumps out as ridiculous. I wonder what his story he's talking about is. It must have been good to get an interview with a famous recluse like that. Something powerful enough to drag Drew Mission out of hiding. I wonder. Maybe it has something to do with Mr. Mission's art? Yeah. Alright, let's uh, let's see his gesture. Circus or something case from several years ago. That red envelope probably has something to do with it. Say what you will, but Drew's style was without compare. I'm gonna try this one. Say what you will. But Drew's talent. Oh! Found something! I have to start over, but I, I was too late to click. But yeah, he was starting to sweat when he was talking about Drew's talent. Here again. There you go. Bang! Sweat much, Mr. Brushel? Uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, a man can't help his glands, you know. <laughs> it's more than that when Mr. Misham's talent was mentioned. You suddenly began to sweat buckets. Uh, You're hiding something about his talent. What? <laughs> 
That's ridiculous. Evidence time. Let's show where Mr. Misham's true talents lay. It just so happened I have evidence showing the talent mentioned in that letter. Alright, let's save. Whoop. There you go. Uh, found that just showed you the large beach in the foreground. Portrait, male supposed to be a person. Wait, wait, wait. Is it gonna be the red envelope? No. Envelope from Mr. Wright, do not unpeel until the time is right. No, that's not it. Magic show ticket. Obtain a juice studio only half is finished, the rust cash is still visible. Okay, I, I think that's it. Yeah, I need to show he's a forger, but I don't know which uh, evidence proves it better. I think the, the, the half finished landscape. Uh, I can't help but wonder what the court is supposed to conclude from this evidence. Oh, other than you're made of horrible mistake, man burns bridge, forget to cross first, and quote. Oops. Let's try that again. All I have to do is reveal what the mission really was. This should be so hard, right? It just so happens our evidence. Uh. The hidden painting? Okay, I'm gonna try the hidden painting. Yes! This painting was found in Mr. Misham's studio. Right. There are two problems with this painting. The first is it wasn't painted by Mr. Misham. The second is that there was another painting in the studio which looked exactly like this one, except it was only half done. Dot dot dot. Brush all. Yeah, I used the original because a complete wouldn't tell us anything. When we had a letter discussing a payment of $100,000, which suggests a certain business operation. The business of making forgeries. Arrgh. Yeah, he's squeezing his uh, head. Tightly with his tongue. Uh. That is all, Your Honor. Everyone, please, please, everyone. Can we keep this private, please? Uh -huh. This is my story. This is my scoop. Forgery? That's a serious crime. Drew Misham is known as an artist these days. But there were rumors he dabbled into another kind of art until a few years back. Another art meaning forgery? Drew Mission was talented, alright. Talented at making precise, detailed fakes. A fact that certain criminals and elements were quick to discover. <laughs> Criminal elements? What? You can seriously be talking about. Exactly. I'm talking about forging evidence. The rumors started circulating seven years ago. Seven years ago? So, are we to understand that this letter, this payment of $100,000, was for... Exactly. For dividends, net tidy profit, end quote. Order, order, order! Why, it's like our victim was living a double life. Aha, this is my chance. So the victim had ties to the criminal world, right? He could have plenty of enemies we know nothing about! Objection. This is my first time hearing this criminal world. This is, my, this is my first time hearing of this criminal world. We certainly found no criminal connection when we con con when conducted our investigation. Objection. But how do you explain all this money? You have to admit there's a possibility of some illegal activity here. But there is no proof tying th this letter to our case. Exclamation mark. Yeah! 
Meaning all the evidence that saves our ass up until now were all forged evidence. The ace, the firecracker, and uh, what's the other one? Crap, in the second... <laughs> our case was and remains simple from the beginning. Only the defendant could have poisoned that mug that night. And you, of, of course. Hey, 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 the only thing I poison is my pen when I'm writing reviews. Mr. Brushel, your testimony to this point has been quite unreliable. It doesn't speak well of your reporting acumen. What are you talking about? My journalism is solid gold. Journalism is so solid you can stand an elephant on it, end quote. In any case, let's hear a summarized recap of your testimony. If we can ascertain the situation in that studio from the recap, the trial is over. Apollo, what's he talking about? The cross-examination show Mr. Brushel didn't have reason or means to poison him. As long as there's no other suspects, then the killer had to be Vera, that's what. This next testimony is our last chance. Mr. Brushel, your testimony please. The interview, colon, a recap. The only other person in the studio that night was the defendant. It was Vera who poured the coffee. She admitted as much herself. The only thing that touched Drew's lips during the interview was that mug. And nothing left that studio after he died. Nothing! Wrong! Clearly. The only one who could have poisoned him was his daughter. A nice testimony. Clear, succinct, and without room for doubt. Ah, shucks. You really think so? I believe this clarifies the situation that night. Very well. Mr. Justice, you may begin your final cross-examination. Right. I still have one trump card left to play. And I won't let this trial end until I use it. The interviewer recap, cross-examination. The only other person in the studio that night was the defendant. Hold it! But that doesn't prove Vera poisoned it. Objection! How many times have we heard that water forehead? The poison reached its victim via the coffee mug. And from where did that coffee come from? Mm? Oh wait, can I check something? Oh. No, it's uh, only for. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for it's for my um, my 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 video because uh, I'm putting some light, but uh, some of the light is uh, refracting on the camera. So um, I need to adjust. Uh... The mark on the mug was because he already had poison on his lips. Anyway. Okay. Not to beat a dead horse again and again, but perhaps you could fill us in? I'm on it. You need a horse speak. I'm your man. It was Vera who poured the coffee. She's admitted as much herself. And you're a witness her pouring the coffee? Of course I didn't witness it. When she came in with that tray, the coffee was already poured and steaming. Let us not forget the defendant has admitted to pouring the coffee herself. I heard her statement. I poured, I served, and I killed. What? <laughs> that last part was just a little joke. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere with this coffee mug. I need to find another weak spot in this case. The only thing that touched Drew's lips during that interview was that mug. Hold it. You sure about that? Well, to be really, really precise, if I was busy gobbling mint candies the whole time... One of those candies might have been poison. 
is yet at the time of the autopsy, no fresh fragrance of mint filled the room. And no mint residue was found. Mm, it was a long shot anyway. So, don't tell me you're still trying to prove this. You think the victim ate, drank, or otherwise ingested something other than coffee? Hmm, well, Mr. Justice, if you have some proof... The possibility is there, I can feel it, just maybe not prove it, not yet. And possibility isn't going to cut it, not now. Mr. Misham ingested that poison via root other than coffee. Oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. I can prove it. Yes, I can. He didn't ingest the coffee. There was poison on the frame. And um, the mark of poison acted like... Um... Yeah, it's the frame. It's the frame. I can prove it. Proof is possible. I gotta risk it. Oh, excellent. Let's see your proof then. Please show us your evidence. What evidence shows that the victim wasn't poisoned via his coffee mug? I'm gonna save here. There you go. Tiny frame. Take Must I explain this over and over? And over. We don't need possibility here, Forehead. We need proof. I know that. You should also know that every proof has its moment. Perhaps you're a bit early? I can tell you what we know at this point. The victim put nothing on his mouth but that coffee mug. <sighs> Another hole in this case that needs plugging before I can prove anything. But first thing first, I'd better uncover a weak spot before I try to strike again. On with, on with the cross-examination! Okay, okay. Here's what happened. I wasn't wrong, but I present this evidence too early. No, that wasn't the wrong evidence, that was the wrong timing. There's a contradiction somewhere, I have to find this, and then I back it up with the evidence I just found. That's what they said. Because <laughs> if that was the wrong evidence, I would be penalized, but I didn't get anything. Nothing left that studio after he died, nothing. The only thing that touched Drew's lips during the interview was that mug. But yeah, it's like I need to prove that he um, he could have uh, been poisoned another way around. But okay, nothing left that studio after he died. Nothing. Not one thing. You sure? Yep, sure as sure can be. Well, with one exception. What exception? What? Journalist Sparks Brushel does interview leaves studios. End quote. <laughs> ah, <laughs> come on! It's a job, get it? Not funny, I know, but still! Did something leave the studio that night? Why does that sound familiar? Where have I heard something like that before? Mm -mm -mm. Now that we've proven our witness is a comedian of sort, I'd like to turn to our defense attorney before returning to the testimony. Do you have any idea if anything might have been left the studio that night? Not a thing or just one thing? What left the studio that night? I'm gonna check the court record, just to be sure. Drew, okay, the letter box was empty. Was that it? The letter he mailed, yeah. 
I think one thing might very well have left the studio that night, actually. A certain something that has vanished from the crime scene. By which you mean? Something. Something other than our witness? Of course. Don't tell me. Vera Misham? Believe me, any comic relief I may provide is entirely unintentional. Then let's see what you've got for us, Mr. Justice. Well, this thing wasn't at the scene of the crime, so I can't show it to you. But I do have evidence that shows it how it could have been taken from the scene. I'm gonna present the letter box. This is the only link between that studio and the outside world. A letter box? What did Mr. Brushel just tell us? When he entered the studio on the night of the murder, the victim had just finished writing a letter. Yeah, I say that, and yeah, it was true. Furthermore, you went on to tell us that he put the letter in the yellow envelope and put it in the letter box. Oh! Uh. But that very same letter box was empty. In other words, that night the yellow envelope disappeared. Ah, oh, yes, intriguing. So an envelope has disappeared from the scene of the crime. Big whoop. Of course, this changes nothing. Huh? He has a point, Mr. Justice. What we're trying to figure out is how the poison got into Mr. Misham. Is it really important that this envelope the witness says he saw disappeared? Well, if it did disappear, then something did leave the studio that night. That seems very important to me. Very well then. The witness will add this to this testimony. You got it. Oh, I think I know what happened. The tiny frame had a stamp on it. He mailed that letter, he licked the stamp, he got poisoned. I think this fails to change anything at forehead. I wouldn't be so sure. A letter disappeared from the crime scene that night. This is exactly the opening I've been looking for. A letter was just put in the, from the studio, but I already think that matters. All right, let's present. Cause yeah, the tiny frame is uh, big enough for a stamp and there's poison behind the, the frame. So there was poison on the stamp. All right. There you go. Oh, come on! Your Honor, when you think about the witness statement... Uh, I'm not sure I'm following you. It clearly uh, contradict the, uh, I thought... You don't sound very sure, Mr. Justice. Overruled! Penalty! Uh, I don't think that's it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, when, when sometimes I save... It's like compressed data, like uh, all my uh, my ROM is gonna have some sort of uh, glitch audio that I have to save like three times or sometimes close or reopen my uh, my window to uh, get it resolved. It's gonna happen, like... I'm, I'm, uh, I'm keeping an ear on that, but yeah. Alright, so... Ah, here he is again. Nothing could be more serious than an envelope disappearing from that studio. And you were hiding that fact from us! Um, yes, well, actually... I don't argue the possibility from a letter disappear from that studio. But I forget, isn't there much of a serious question before... Okay, I know. I think I know what I need to do. Okay, okay. I need to go back. You, you see what I did? I need to add that statement and then prove the stamp on another statement. That's where... If, if what I think is right, that I need that he had the statement so I can go back and press on another statement. It's like... But Air Forehead, isn't there a much more serious question before us? Right, how Mr. Mission was poisoned, I know. But Mr. Brushel's testimony has changed, which means the fact of the case have too. And what he's told us means something's entirely different now, I'm starting to think. Let's keep thinking, Apollo! Yeah. Like, 
it's the, the um, when he changed the testimony when there's a new line doesn't necessarily mean that this uh, addition is a lie it just means that having that line might contradict another thing he said so this is where the the frame we had it right but it was too early that's what they tell us now it would make sense since we have that line extra line that says that uh, oh yeah I, uh, wait what do you think Apollo? everything he's saying seems not so flawed well that's kind of what you want from a testimony really I need to keep my eyes on what matters how and why was Drew Mission killed he report the coffee that's not going to change but if that coffee didn't kill him I need to find out what did and prove it the only other person Mr. Drew was a defendant was Vera report the coffee she needed as much herself the only thing that touched Drew's lips during the interview was that mug not true there was something else there was a stamp inside the tiny frame so I'm gonna see him pre present the exception. I'm gonna try the the, the first. Uh... Objection! I can prove it. Proof is possible. It goes nothing. You do understand what we need, yeah? Proof air forehead, not possibilities. Of course. And Prosecutor Gavin, I hope you understand. I'm ready to give you that proof. You see? Oh, what did you say? I have proof of the disappearing envelope. Ah, uh, so I'm writing your letter. I did. Which was picked up by the mailman, I assume. Of course. Which means that envelope had a stamp on it. A stamp? Oh. As we all know, stamps come with dry glue on the back. In order to use the glue, you have to wet it by licking the stamp. <laughs> no one were talking to actually lick stamps in this day and age. Even if you wanted to talk to him, you couldn't. He's dead after all. Okay. So he licked the stamp. But wait, how does that explain the atroquinin on the rim of the coffee mug? Objection! If he licked the back of a poison stamp, the poison would get on his tongue. Yes, that would... What would happen if he put the coffee mug to his mouth? Hmm? Exclamation mark. Those traces of the mug weren't the killer's doing. It was the other way around. What? The coffee mug didn't poison Mr. Misham. Mr. Mushin poisoned the coffee mug himself. Order, order, order. But that doesn't, does it? Recall, if you would. Atrocanin is a slow acting poison, yes? The poison entered his body when he put the stamp on that envelope. But his time wasn't up until the very moment he touched his lip of that cup of joe. Everybody silent. Brussels taking notes. We have something to add, Mr. Brussel. Uh-oh, his nose is picking up another scent. As I believe I mentioned earlier. Well, that's the thing, see? After he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. Yes, a stamp, a so-called poster stamp, end quote. But you know, I don't seem to remember him ever finding one. Maybe he's just run out? Incidentally, we searched the desk drawer at the scene of the crime. There were no stamps. Not a single one. Exclamation mark. Hmm, that does pose a problem. How will you prove that the stamp was coated with poison? Actually, I'm glad no other stamps were found. It makes proving the stamp he used was poison possible. <laughs> good show, good show. You can't even prove there was a stamp at the scene in the first place. Well, let's hear what the defense has to say anyway. 
where's your evidence that proves the existence of this poison stamp? Here you go. Now we present the tiny frame. Because it tested positive for atroquinin. Well, that certainly is a cute little frame. And by little, I mean really little. It was on the victim's desk, your honor. Quite empty as you can see for yourself. I noticed that too during my inspection. So what? Ah, apparently you weren't as observant as you should have been. You see, when you saw this frame, it was missing something quite important. Missing something? Yes, a pale bluish stain on the inside of the frame. Actual queen and residue! What? Why was I night souls about this? The frame is only 2 inches square. The face of the frame is even smaller. Maybe an inch wide at most. You aren't saying. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I am. Tell me, what fits in such a small frame? A commemorative stamp, perhaps! You ran out of stamps, so you have to took one. Order, order, order! The poison stamp was in this frame? Impossible! Prosecutor Gavin? Why would he put something like that on his desk? Don't tell me he has it there so he could commit suicide in the mood truck. You know, can I say something? I had a thought, see? What, Mr. Brushel, then please stop jittering around like that! The big thing was a forger, right? There's a lot of money in that line of work. Forger forges friends, makes enemies too, end quote. So the poison stamp might have been a murder weapon aimed at him. Objection! Oh, rich. That's rich. Leave the ridiculous flight of fancy to the governor's song lyrics, please. Finally, something we agreed on. The stamp was a murder weapon? Nonsense! Murder is a simple business, yeah? Who would go to such lines? No one! Oh, I disagree. C -c -c come again? Recall, if you would, the victim's reclusive lifestyle. Drew Misham hid from the world. He avoided meetings. His only contact with the outside world was the mail. The mail. Now, if you wanted to kill someone you couldn't meet, but you knew read letters, a stamp would be the perfect weapon. Ridiculous, where's your proof? I want proof. Show us evidence that this poison stamp was sent to him as a murder weapon. I might not have evidence per se, but things are finally starting to come together. What is it, Apollo? Your fists are trembling. I think I know what happened. I don't believe it, but I can see it. I think I know how Mr. Mission was killed. Well, fill us in, Mr. Justice. A certain piece of evidence points to the truth, Your Honor. I can show you how someone with the intent to kill sent Mr. Mission the stamp of death. Dinner time? Okay, this is a crucial moment here, uh, Jake. I might have... I might make a lot of mistakes, you probably have time to finish eating and come back before I, I, I solve the, the thing, but I'm uh, probably gonna... Professor Plum in the foyer with the rope! Hello, miscellaneous! You're coming to a crucial point. Um, I, I'm just... Um, I'm, I'm in the part of uh, Apollo Justice when I'm defending uh, the daughter of an artist who happens to be a forger. And uh, now I um, enter the possibility that it could be, uh, since he's a shut-in and he has uh, no contacts with the outside world besides old male, uh, that uh, he could have been poisoned with a stamp with atroquinine in the glue. I found the frame. I found something that contradicts the testimony because there was a journalist that said that he was mailing a yellow letter. We didn't find a yellow letter because it was in the mailbox. The mailbox was empty, so we couldn't find... Okay, this one's a doozy. You remember that case? All right. 
Uh, I played this game uh, 10 years ago and I forgot I, I I forgot how it happened but yeah uh, now I need to show him that uh, someone with the intent to kill sent Mr. Mission the stamp and, uh, and I don't know what to do I don't know what to present I have this pink envelope but I don't think that's the right time to, to, to give it do not open until the time is right. This is gonna be my first guess because I don't have anything else. This is an autopsy report. I already played um There's this car, this you know what? Fudge it. I'm gonna I'm gonna play the, the, the envelope. Oh, I got a reaction! Judge dot dot dot. I'm not sure it's entirely clear to me what this proves, Mr. Justice. Ah, uh, was I wrong? I believe we have shown probable intent to kill. Except the killer would be our judge and the victim you. Yeah. Consider that a warning, Mr. Justice. Think before presenting next time. Ouch. Yes, Your Honor. Let's think this one over again. A certain pieces of evidence point to the truth, Your Honor. I can show you how someone with the intent to kill sent someone. The red envelope? I'm gonna say just to be sure. Oh yeah, I remember! Isn't this envelope the one from seven years ago? Think about the text of the letter again. There were two pages in the envelope. This is page one. Page two, sign the paper and send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within days. You receive the stamp, use the stamp and lick it and that, uh... all right. And this is page two. I want to draw your attention on one phrase in particular. Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. The enclosed stamp, your honor. Oh! In other words, if I have the strength, the stamp poison on the lamp, like like gas, end quote. Now, what if you had done exactly as the letter asked? He would sign the document. Put in the envelope and put the stamp on it, right? Then he would put it in this letter box. Fifteen minutes would have elapsed between affixing the stamp and mailing the letter, but the clock started ticking, and when the time came, he drew his last breath. And the murder weapon would have been taken away from the scene. Quite conveniently, thanks to the postal system. Rubber, 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 rubber. Such a splendid imagination you have, Herr Forehead. Da da da. Let me confirm one thing with you, if I might. So, this poison stamp was inside this envelope from seven years ago, yeah? Is that what you have us believe? Really? Well. It's a little bit of a stretch, but there's a possibility. Yes, a very small possibility. How small, I wonder? Um, a poison stamp in this envelope. A stamp that then becomes a murder weapon. How do you intend to prove this seemingly coincidence? Well... Ah, no, it was seven years ago, and we don't even know who sent that letter. And your answer... Is silence, I see. Very well. I move to... Question mark. It's not nice to pick on the Fraulein Clavier. Huh? Christoph! Emma! Ah, Emma! Okay, I'm gonna bring up my snacks. She probably is gonna have an anim animation. 
and uh, miscellaneous. I don't know if you were here at the beginning. Uh, for today's today's streams, I'm eating uh, Wernley's Granor. These are um, Swiss cookies made with real Swiss chocolate milk. Uh, it's a wafer with a cocoa cream filling topped with uh, crispy rice and uh, covered in Swiss milk chocolate 42%. Uh, they look like this. Like if we remove the, 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 the crispy rice, these looks exactly like the snack whose Emma Skies is eating, don't you think? Those sounds really good. Oh, they are, they are. Well, do you like my Christoph Gavin impersonation? Do I sound like him? <laughs> Don't quit your day job. Don't you have a crime scene to be looking after, Fraulein Detective? Someone at Strom Dick, you are all the mess you've been making on this case. Mess? You know, none of this would have happened if you trusted in the science a little bit more. You can find out if that stamp was in that envelope. Easy. Care to explain yourself, Fraulein Detective? Hmm, clear at me all you want, but science is on my side. It's all in the residue, right? Ah, oh, that's right! The poison detection spray! Produce the red envelope at once! You can open it on the authority of the court! Oh yeah, we're gonna spray the paper with the, the, the reagent. And if we see a reaction, it's proof that there was a stamp in the envelope. Spring, spring, this is like case 5 from the first game all over again. Yep. Got it. On the corner, bottom right, piece of paper, there's a stamp. Well, would you look at that? No mistake in it. <laughs> That's a chicken residue. Rubble, 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 rubble. I, 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 I don't believe it. A murder weapon from the past. Now, seven years later, it bears its fangs at last. Attention! Absolutely outrageous. Tell me why. Why didn't this murder take place seven years ago? Well, um, there's one possibility. Maybe Mr. Misham figured it out. Figure what out? He realized that the person who sent that letter wanted him dead. So he sent him his reply with a different stamp. And put his decisive evidence in the frame. Hold it. So, who said that? Russell. Oh, uh, you still here? Hold it. Can I make a statement here on the record? I, Spark Razor Tooth Brushel, claim this scoop as mine! <laughs> Drew Misham killed in cold blood by sender of seven year old letter, unquote. What a scoop! No, maybe something more succinct. Star falls after seven years delay, unquote. Yeah, Brushel, please. Order! 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 Alright, Jake. Uh, we finally found proof. The stamp. Remember the red envelope? Page 2 said, please send the letter with the stamp given inside of the envelope. Like, the, whoever sends um, um, the artist the red envelope, he was the murderer. And we proved it. Because uh, the judge gave us authority to open the, the envelope and we uh, spray with the reagent to see if there was a po uh, uh, if there was poison atroquinine residue on the page and um, there's a reaction that there was a square square residue stamp shape on the piece so um, now Emma Sky is here and uh, she saved the day and uh, yeah, um, so uh, somebody tried to kill Drew seven years ago and he um, deduced that whoever sent him the letter was going to kill him. So he sent the mail back with another letter, with another stamp 
and he kept the stamp as a souvenir for seven years. Now, I wonder what drove him to, um, like maybe he ran out of stamp and he decided off oh, fudge it, because if he knew the stamp was poison and decided to keep it, why did he lick it? But now, um, the journalist wants, wants the scoop. And this is why, uh, this is where we're at. Did he keep the stamp? As a souvenir of his former life? I don't know why he kept the stamp. I don't know why he threw it in the, the garbage. It's, it's dangerous. Maybe he wanted to kill someone with it? I don't know. <laughs> I see no room for further argument here. Though I admit, this is all coming as quite a shock. To think that the murder weapon reached his mouth after seven years. Stamp is ticket straight to afterlife, end quote. Uh-oh, I think the witness is a bad influence on our judge. Maybe he forgot about the stamp, that's true, after seven years. I see no man need to further debate on this matter. The sender of that letter seven years ago could hardly have been our defendant. Ah, Apollo! I think we just won! Very well, this court fight the defendant... Objection! Of course, Clavier. I mean, he didn't know the stamp was going to kill him. Maybe he thought, yeah, I mean... For poisons to stick on the stamp after seven years? Is this the bright future of our legal system? Prosecutor, Gavin? A ticket to the afterlife from seven years ago? Ticket for Governor's show are invalid after two weeks. But, but it doesn't make sense in another way. It boggles my mind that so many people haven't noticed this. There's a fatal contradiction in Air Forehand's claim. A, a, a contradiction? A poison stamp was placed in this envelope seven years ago. Whereupon it was framed until now. If that's the case, then why would Drew Misham have done what he did? Emma, explain that. Wait, I'm gonna adjust the sound. Okay. Emma, explain that. He must have realized it was poison. Therein lies the hub! Exclamation mark. Seven years ago, the forger drew Misham, sends a trap, and put the stamp in the frame. I do not debate this, but this begs the question. Why, seven years later, did he use that stamp on the night of the murder? Ah! Okay, I'm gonna... Okay. Surely, you don't mean to suggest that Mr. Misham simply FORGOT he put the murder weapon in a, in a frame on his desk for seven years and FORGOT? You expect us to believe he sprang the trap on himself? Uh... Well, uh yeah... <laughs> While I admit, this is all quite shocking myself, it does seem highly unlikely that he would fall afoul of a trap. Dad had been sitting on his desk for seven years. Apollo! I don't think we're winning anymore. Oh, I'm glad to see we're all back in the real world now. Welcome back to reality! We've been waiting for you, our forehead! <laughs> Hello Tyler, I, I, I'm doing good, very good, thank you, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're in the middle of a trial, uh, we're trying to defend um, a forger. Uh, he's been killed by poisoning. At first they say that uh, he's been killed by poison in the coffee. And since the, um, he, he was doing an interview with the reporter, and since the reporter was uh, nowhere near the coffee cup, uh, he was ruled out, and since nobody else came in in the, the trial, 
only his daughter could have done it. So now we're defending um, his daughter. Of course, she claims she she, she didn't do it. Now we were um, um, entertaining the idea that he was poisoned somewhere else. Because there was poison on the mug, but the mug was not poison. Like, um, we, we suspect that uh, he was poisoned by licking a stamp. There was poison on the stamp. I had to reset this darn Twitch app. Oh, really? Okay. So he had to... Um, so uh, we, we suggest that um, the, the victim was poisoned by licking a stamp he received from an envelope seven years ago about a payment of... Um, one thousand uh, one hundred thousand dollars for um, for a counterfeit art because he's, he's a forger he forge uh, stuff like evidence or stuff like that and um, yeah I mean and somehow he kept it on the refrain but now the current the, the prosecutors is uh, pointing out that if he knew the the stamp was poisoned why did he lick it why did he kept it seven years ago? Uh, like, doesn't doesn't make sense. Okay, then. How do you explain the poison stamp that was in this envelope? The poison stamp? Where exactly is this poison stamp again? Have you brought it to court for us? Uh... No, it cannot be Gavin. <laughs> it cannot be Gavin. Uh, I see no proof that such a thing ever existed. Objection! What about the actual queen in residue, huh? Oh, I agree. There, that does seem to be actual queen in residue. But her forehead, it's certainly no stamp. Yeah, but... Even if your precious poison stamp did exist, Drew Misham never would have used it. That is all. Arrgh! Gavin asked for forged evidence seven years ago. He would have been a prosecutor at the time, I think. He was all them. Yes! If I remember correctly, he was in prosecution when um, Phoenix Wright lost, lost his uh, trial and his job. I believe we come to a conclusion. Again. Clavier seems too honorable to want forged evidence to help with his potential first case. Agreed. Agreed. Apollo, were we wrong the whole time? I, I can't believe it. The poison traces match up. It can't be a coincidence. I'd like to bring some closure to this issue sometime this year. Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor. Let's review the facts and see where we stand. Seven years ago, Drew Misham received a ev red envelope. There were traces of poison natural quinine on the document inside that envelope. A similar trace was also found at the crime scene, on this tiny picture frame. The defense has indicated the possibility of a yellow envelope, an envelope that left the scene of the crime with the poison stamp on it. Yes, but even if this envelope contained a poison stamp, and Drew Misham, knowing this, put it in the frame, he never would have used that stamp. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid you're right. Which means there is a fatal flaw in the defense's case. I haven't been on the wrong track this whole time, I'm sure of it. The traces of atroquinin, the envelope, the frame, and Drew Misham's mysterious death, they all connected somehow. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have a conclusion for us? The defense stands by its case, Your Honor. We've seen that the logical outcome of the evidence makes no sense. Which means that none of your... That one of our clues must be a fake. Ah. A fake clue? Hmm, fascinating. And if we... To find this fake, your wild fantasies will prove quite reasonable, yeah? That fake clue that's thrown us off the poison trail is none other than... The red envelope, the frame, or Drew Misham. 
Okay, we have to make a decision here, chat. Which is the fake? The red envelope, the frame, or Drew Misham? I would say Drew too. But then again, putting it on the frame, like the the the, the letter was open and wait 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 wait. I'm gonna check my evidence again. I'm gonna check about the red envelope. Found in the victim's desk drawer contains two sheets of paper. Ah, oh, it doesn't say if uh, the. Um, That envelope was never open, right? So how did the stamp got out? Well, guess. The frame, why would he have the envelope put on the night he died? Ah. Uh, okay. I'm gonna save and... Um, I'm gonna save here and I'm gonna try everything. And I'm gonna come back if it's wrong. I know it's... Uh, this red envelope is a fake. Without a doubt, Your Honor. Objection! Mm. Wasn't it you who presented this evidence to the court? Oh. Hold on a second, Apollo. The poison on that envelope, the frame, and the coffee mug, they're all connected somehow. Oh, right. I, I can't hear already. It looks like the fake was you, Air Forehead. Now is not the time for wallowing in self pity. Let's get thinking, Apollo. Okay. All right. There's no consequences for us doing getting it wrong. The open the envelope was open and resealed. The fake must have been Drew then. All right, we're gonna try Drew. Drew mission. The victim was a fake clue. I'm afraid I don't understand. I'll explain. We have an envelope, a frame, and a mug linked by poison. That all makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the victim himself. Objection. Congratulations, you have completely lost me. So, the fake evidence is none other than the master of fake himself, the forger. Maybe Drew wasn't the intended victim. Hmm. It makes a good story, I'll give you that. The fake clue. Fakes. Forgeries. <gasps> I know that face! That's the I just had an idea face! I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going with it anyway. What if our forger is the fake? Come again? Seven years ago, our forger sniffed a trap and stepped aside. Seven years passed, now the forger stumbles into that very same trap and dies. Why? That's what I want to know. Because the forger was killed, was a fake. Here we are again. The victim was a fake. Mm hmm. One forger smelled the trap. One forger fell into the trap. That's two forgers! And one of them was a fake! Order, order, order! So you are telling us that Drew Misham, the victim, was a fake? Well, if he was the fake, who was the real forger? You'd better not be claiming there was some kind of switcheroo. I'm afraid you're going to have to back up your story, Mr. Justice. Show us just who the real Drew Misham was. If Drew Misham wasn't the real forger, there's only one other person he could have been. Understood, Your Honor. Forger Drew Misham was himself a forgery. The real forger was... Now I need to present someone. Alright, I'm gonna take a wild guess. I'm gonna say it's the daughter Vera. There can only be one explanation, really. The real identity of the forger known as Drew Misham is none other than... 
His only daughter, Vera Misha. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait. So, okay. So, if I go with that line of logic, she was the forger who keep receiving letters all along and she kept the frame in. But she was using her father's name. Her dad had nothing to do with it. But then, he took the credit. He, he. And then the reporter wanted to talk about Drew Mission about something. We probably didn't know that. But, hey, only you if you have safe state. Yes, I have safe state. I have safe state. Alright, I'm gonna try. Order, order, order! Mr. Justice, this is going on a limb, even for you. I kinda agree, I mean, Vera, a forger? Let's consider it before you write it off entirely. If you look at the paintings in the studio, one fact becomes quite clear. Forgery had been taking place in that studio for quite some time. The forger wasn't caught in that trap seven years ago. This can only be mean that the one who was caught in the trap wasn't the forger. Well, actually that does make a certain kind of sense. One more thing. Only two sets of fingerprints were found in the Forger studio. Drew Mishams and Vera Mishams. Dot dot dot. If we know that Drew Misham wasn't the Forger, that leaves only one possibility by process of elimination. The Forger was Vera Misham. Well, I think I got it right. Fascinating. Because I would have had a penalty if uh, if that was wrong. Now they bring the, the Vera to the court. Vera mission? Dot dot dot. I mean... Probably the reporter was the killer, but we were asking who was the forger. The reporter never set foot in the house until now. Like, we know that there was a forger living in the house. So there was only two possibilities. Drew and Vera. They both live in the same house. If one is not the, the real forger, the other one must be. You've been paying attention to the trial so far? Dot dot dot. Let's just ask her and be done with it, shall we? Who are you? Who is the forger, Drew Misham? Dot dot dot. She, she's cowering. She, she's cowering be, behind her sketchbook. Was that an expression of emotion I saw on her face? She's staring holes into Prosecutor Gavin's face. I'm used to be stared by, uh, I'm used to be stared at by Fräuleins, believe me. Though they usually talk to me too. Tell us, were you the one who forged those works of art? She dry something. Yes. Smiley. And she signed it. So, so the forger drew mission was you? Oh, now she make a, a, a crying face. Yes, it was me. What? 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 Rubble, 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 rubble. Wait, wait, how old is she again? The court was in an uproar and wasn't coming down. I need to check the profiles again. She's 19 years old. She was forging at age 12? She's the ultimate forger. Welcome to Hope Speak Academy. <laughs> the court was in an uproar and wasn't coming down. <laughs> we have to break from a 10 minute recess. To be continued! Wow, what an upset. Do you want to save? Of course. I'm gonna save for sure. My god, what a twist, huh? Our own client, the forger.
October 8, 1.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 6. Welcome to the Crash Cry for the Ultimate Forgery. <laughs> okay. So, where exactly does this leave us, Apollo? Well, the Drew Misham was killed. Wasn't Drew Misham the forger, basically. Huh? Well, then who was he? Well, he was actually... Vera dot dot dot, nail polish, doing her nails. So, you really made those forgery? Dot dot dot. Yes, for father. Crying smiley. I know it was wrong. Could you tell us how it happened? Dot dot dot. My father was a painter. I loved painting ever since I was a child. One day father saw it in me. He, he saw that I had the talent. Talent for making forgeries? How should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Given the materials, I could make anything. Anything. Father was so proud and I so happy. But in the end, I was making those forgeries. I've never had a good constitution nor personality. I know very little of the world outside my door. Da, da, da. Now, because of me, father is... You know about the red envelope? I, I remember that envelope. It was some time ago. So, you were already, uh, um... You were already creating your works back then? I started when I was only 12 years old. So, the one who figured out the stamp was poison? That was... Master Justice, it's time to the courtroom, please. That was the bailiff. No, that's wrong. <laughs> right. Out of time. Wait, Vera, just one more thing, please. Those three paintings in the studio. I painted those as part of my work. Right, see? We checked them out and we saw that was underneath. We saw the rough sketches underneath the three finishes painting. Oh yeah! Uh, I see. Da da da. Mr. Justice? Yes? Father, he knew of you. Of both of you. Your late father? He, he was watching, gathering information. All about the right and call law offices. But lately, we're not doing just law. Yes, you do tricks, gags to amuse and play piano. Well, they're not really gags. Yet when Father heard you had resumed the legal business. Smiley. How pleased he was. Who was Mr. Mission? How am I supposed to know? What if he was daddy's daddy? Judging, judging from the relatives' ages involved, I'd say it's highly unlikely. Things are already confusing enough with all these daddies running around. We know that the victim's daughter, Vera, was the forger. What does this mean for the case? I guess we're about to find out. October 8, 1.36 p.m. District Court. Courtroom number 3. Court is not by concession. Vera dot dot dot. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Oh. 
I got a bad feeling about this. Perhaps you could begin by telling us how it all worked? How did you set up this Drew Mission Forger persona? Dot dot dot. Scouring. There is that stare again. She's drilling more holes into his head. I know it's hard for you, but hey, he's an handsome guy. What's hard? Very well. Um... She's putting nail polish a lot on his nails and now she's biting them. Well then, miss, if you would. Did you really make those detestable forgeries? Because I remember the cutscene at the beginning that, that she passed out. She was uh, testifying and then she uh, fall, uh, she, uh, she fall on the ground. Yeah, Jake gets it. Where, exclamation mark. Perhaps you'd rather answer my question? Were you the one who painted that painting, the remarkably similar one? Uh, yes. Smiley. I painted it, yes. Father praised me quite highly for it. So, she was the one who made the forgeries. Yet she did not wish to reveal the truth of the operation. So the victim was a standing, a decoy. To the world at large, he was the forger, not her. Vera da da da. I've done a bad thing. I have, haven't I? Regardless, we need a little more information. About, for instance, this shows the red envelope. Exclamation mark. You have been this. You have seen this before, yeah? Yes. It, it, it was in the desk drawer. Very well. You may proceed with your testimony. Tell us everything you know about this envelope. Witness testimony. The red envelope. I created things and father sold them. This envelope came after my first work that was other than a printing. Father and all the deal, all of it. <laughs> oh, she, she's drawing a stamp on her sketchbook. I received the stamp that was in that envelope. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Hmm. There certainly was much of great interest in your testimony. No doubt. Not that the witness realized it. Very well. Please begin the cross-examination. Right. Okay. I need more information about this forger. This Jew mission. Red envelope. The bracelet doesn't react. I created... Things and father sold them. Hold it. So these things you were making are um, you mean paintings identical to other paintings, right? The closer they were, the happier father was. I was happy too. Still, you're quite young now. When did you begin this work? My first painting sold when I was twelve. Your Honor, she had no idea what she was doing was illegal. Objection! Is it our little attorney? You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. Hmm, true. Please, tell us more about this envelope. This envelope that may very well have killed your father. Alright. This envelope came after my first work that was other than the painting. By other than the painting, you mean you'd only done paintings up to that point? Yes. But further had a realization. He noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance? For instance, a letter someone had written. Or a fingerprint left upon a cup. Or a signature on the document, a seal upon the letter. 
none of this makes her sound very innocent at all. And the $100,000 promise in this letter was the start. The, be the beginning of a new industry for our blue mission. A new industry? The creation of items to be used in criminal proceedings. Forging evidence, in other words. Uh oh. Father and the deal, all of it. So, you didn't know how the things you were making were being used. Smiley. I enjoyed painting very much. I think I understand. The Fräulein was lived in an unusual little world. Can you tell us what happened to the papers that were in this envelope? Father signed them and sent them back, I believe. Um, did he follow the instruction? Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp? Da, da, da. This is a rather important matter. Give your answer some thought. Receive the stamp that was in that envelope. What do you mean, you received it? Sad face. Did I do something wrong? You, you didn't use that stamp because it was dangerous, correct? Deadly poison on the back, actual quinin. A moment, air forehead. Exclamation mark. You can't force an answer upon the witness. Now then, perhaps, you would tell me, Fräulein Vera, why did you receive this stamp? <laughs> Cowering. Da da da. Is something wrong? Drawing a stamp? It was beautiful. Huh. You mean it was one of those commemorative stamps? I think it was. So you didn't know about the poison. Dot dot dot. Grumpy face. Like uh How 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 the meep with a twelve year old know that something was poison? Oh she liked it so she wanted to keep it. Yes! Yes! The the stamp was pretty so this uh, so Daddy, can we keep the stamp? Her. Like, he put it on the frame and there you go. No, none of them thought that uh, it was poison. So it was not that, ah, I sprung a trap. It was just, just pure, pure luck. Pure luck. So our assessment was wrong. So he did accidentally kill himself. So there's no, so it was an accidental suicide. Or well, well, that's a murder. Uh, we still, we still cannot find who sent the letter. Probably Kristoff, for all we know. <laughs> I guess not. So the trap failed by chance, by mistake, thanks to this commemorative stamp. Hmm, quite the close call. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Wait a minute, you mean if you move to where the, your current Drew studio is? Yes, we saw very few people there. I began drawing picture books. This single job had tied them to the criminal underworld. I would think Mr. Misham wished to reduce their visibility as the world at large. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father Pose as the creator of the work. So that was the real essence of the artist Drew Misham. You did the work and he supplied the face. Yeah. So you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in. Smart, sad face. Apparently not. Dot dot dot. About this commemorative stamp. Could you tell us more about it? Mm 
Da, da, da. It was very pretty, and more than that. Yes? It was a picture of people I liked at the time. Huh? This is something new. Apparently, we've got some cross-examination yet ahead of us. If you would be so kind as to continue your testimony, Fräulein. She smiles. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magician, so I kept it. <gasps> Not the grammaries! I'm gonna press on that. Magician, you say? I love mysterious things, I always have. Even though she fainted when she saw Mr. Hat. You're confusing mysterious with freaky. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. See? See? Isn't magic great? Fine, great. Yeah, sure. No need to get all excited. But the magic troop we saw disbanded soon after. I was quite sad. Hmm. Did she just say what I think she said? Magic troop, now where I have learned that before. The red envelope came after she completed her first job. That makes it a letter from her client, whoever wanted a forgery made. Apollo! We're close, we just have to piece together the parts. A deadly weapon in a red envelope, and the path it took to take Drew Mission's life. I created takes and father sold them. Okay, now it's uh, going back and forth. Alright. Uh, what am I presenting here? I received the stamp that was in the envelope. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. I want to check something. Because if they move... This... Um... Because, um... The red envelope... They kept the red envelope, but... We cannot see the address. Uh, was it sent? We assumed that it, we received it in the studio, but they, they moved there after they received the red envelope, right? But that doesn't prove that that's not enough solid to say that there was a. The grammar envelope. On the stamp? Yeah, that's the connection. But. Yeah, so since there's um Okay, I'm gonna save here. Hopefully she's not gonna fait on us right now. <laughs> no, didn't work. That uh it doesn't show contradiction. They they they're short, there's a connection, but that does not contradict her statement. How exactly are the evidence and the statement just are now related? Uh, they aren't, aren't they? No, no, no. Mr. Justice, please think the fact over before making accusation. Penalty! I don't think that won't, that won't mean any points with the judge. It's cause, um, I'm gonna present the red envelope. No, doesn't work either. The witness statement is clearly faulty, your honor. I'm sorry, but I can't see nothing faulty. Hmm. Vera's card. Defendant's business card. It says Vera Misham on it. Wait, if that's your various card, why is it under your name? Wait, 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 wait. That's not the right, uh... No, didn't work either. 
<laughs> the magic show ticket? I'm gonna present the, the ticket to... Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. The red envelope came after she completed her first job. That makes it a letter from her client, whoever wanted a forgery made. Follow! We're close, we just have to piece together the parts. A deadly weapon in a red envelope. The path it took to Bisham's life. Okay. I'm gonna present the, 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 the ticket. See if there's a connection, but... Um, Yeah, it worked. The ticket worked. Those magician you liked. Was it this bunch? Yep. Apollo, they're not a bunch. Hmm, I see. Still, I have to wonder. Why include a commemorative stamp like that in a business letter? Good question. Well, pretty stamps are always better, and you can't beat through grabbery! But the whole murder plan was a failure because of it! Ironic, don't you think? Prosecutor Gavin? Ah, uh, Gavin is sweating. Dot dot dot. Prosecutor Gavin? Gram, gram, grammary? What's with Gavin? Might I ask just one question? For this witness? Question mark. In your testimony just now, you stated this was your first work that was other than the painting. Da da da. She's biting her nails. Please tell me, what exactly did you make? She now now he's serious. Can I ask why? No! Answer the question now. Prosecutor Gavin, you're usually not the one whose volumes concerns me. Yes, it is unbecoming of me. I apologize. But I must know, please, Miss Misham, tell me. It was, it was a book. A single page in a book. A book? Please be more specific. Da da da. It was a handwritten book, like, like a diary. Ah! He grabs his fist. Da da da. No! I don't know. No! Everybody silent. This goes back to a grammar case. Yes, I think the one. This is when I think I think it has something to do with. Uh... What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? It looks like he saw a ghost. Miss Misham, this book. Was there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover? Yes or no? Oh! How? How did you know? Prosecutor Gavin, the defendant is answering all of your questions. Stop badgering her. Dot dot dot. He's told you nothing, has he? Your soiled, solid mentor. He told you nothing. Solid? Who? Phoenix Wright. Who else? Daddy. He never told you about the trial seven years ago. About how he came to lose his attorney's badge? No! It was a certain piece of evidence that decided his fate, you know. A certain diary. On the back, it bore the mark of a silk hat. What? Phoenix Wright tossed out of the profession by false evidence? And the forger who made that evidence was her? This girl standing right in front of me? Vera, you must tell us. The evidence you made was used in a trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Misham? You to forge that evidence. 
For all our sakes, who was it? Biting our nails. We, we only met once. You, you met the client? Well, who was it? Uh, it was, it was. Da, da, da. What's going on with Vera? She's staring at Prosecutor Gavin's face again. Yes, what? Is there something about me? Da, da, da. I remember clearly. I remember who gave me the book, the diary. Da, da, da. Who was it? Da, da, da. Oh! Joke! <coughs> Vera! And then she fell. This is where she fell. She's collapsing. Oh my god. The de devil. The devil. Boom. It was the devil. The nail polish was poisoned. No, um I think I understand like she kept looking at Gavin because I believe it was Christoph. Because Gavin is his twin brother. And when he's looking at Gavin, she was scared. And she was staring at him. Like she, you know? This ends the recording of the trial for the murder of Drew Misham. Vera Misham was, during the trial, poisoned by an unknown sin. Now you have to remember, this trial was picked by Phoenix Wright himself. He couldn't be the killer. I believe that he... Pick this trial because he knew that thing did her, did him in, and he wanted to get the truth exposed. You see, because Phoenix lost his job because of that trial, and and uh, he, he, he understand he, he he wants to come back. I don't think they're twins. I think Kristoff is older. He's probably older, yeah, but he looks exactly alike. Like. Uh, like Christoph has glasses, probably he's a big older brother. Yeah, you're right. But but he wasn't physical for. But no, Phoenix probably used the forged evidence, but probably didn't know about that. I mean, we're gonna see. Vera Mission was during the trial, poisoned by an unknown assailant. There you go. The dosage was just under the lethal amount, sparing the defendant's life. Oh. <laughs> She is currently in intensive care and is not to be disturbed for any reason. A very simple case at first glance. Until it finally began to show its true colors. The long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. Listen to that music! This is old school Phoenix Wright team. We're gonna see it, folks. We're gonna see the trial. Yes, there's a picture of Phoenix Wright right there. Old school Phoenix Wright. In some ways, that was the starting point of it all. Now we see, oh my god, we see a younger Clavier. He has short hair and a black jacket, but he's wearing his governor's necklace. He looks like a rock star. And this is where we must go. Oh, we see a little cute Trucy to find the whole truth. There's a very look munchkin Trucy from seven years ago, like an uh, eight-year-old Trucy. Oh, she's so cute. You want to pinch her face. Oh, she cute as she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. 